Oh, hello, everyone. It's time for more book club. Are you excited? I totally am. Um, I was really excited to pick this book up at our favorite bookstore, the Two Sisters Bookery. It's called You Can't Drink All Day If You Don't Start in the Morning uh, by Celia Rivenbark. Now, she is um, a writer who actually lives in Wilmington. She writes the funniest stuff in the world. She's got another book called Bell Weather. And we're just like you, only prettier. Uh, she's very Southern. And... I picked this book up uh, because I want to go and talk to her about maybe, you know, seeing if she wants to do anything with Southern Gothic, teaming up a little bit. Uh, and so in a homage to going back to school, I'm going to read you guys the first chapter from her book. TB or not TB, perfect attendance nuts don't care. It doesn't win me any points with the other mommies, but I tend to yell boo and make lots of exaggerated thumbs down gestures whenever a kid skips up to the stage to receive a perfect attendance certificate at the end of the school year. Sure, it's a little unorthodox. Some might even say rude, but I don't think it's any ruder than risking everybody else's health just so you can get a stupid fill-in-the-blank award certificate from Office Depot. You know what our little family got from your kid's perfect attendance? The month of March with the scaly rash and violent unpredictable diarrhea. Well, you asked. Perfect attendance awards are usually presented at a tasty combo platter that is the year-end assembly, awards presentation, fifth grade graduation, and nacho bar. It gores my ox every single year, hence the booing. What is wrong with you? asked my fitness freak mommy friend. I try not to hate her because she always arrives breathless from something called spinning class. For the longest time, I thought she was actually doing something with yarn, but I found out there's actually a class where you all, all you do is sit in a room and ride a bike that doesn't go anywhere. You need a class for that? How about breathing in and out? Need a class for that too? Fitness mommy was pissed at me. She would need to do a few dozen downward dog, downward facing dogs and journal for at least an hour to center herself. You just booed a child. Who does that? A boo. Guess she got her answer. Stop it. Those kids are going to get their feelings hurt. Here, have some edamame. It'll keep your mouth shut. Uh, she goes on over here. Let's see. Hold on, I'm looking for my next favorite part. Um, she talks about kids. Oh, I know a woman who got a little brass lapel pin for never missing a day of school all the way through 12th grade. I went to school with measles, she said ruefully one day. Can you imagine? Hell no, I laid out of school if there was a frickin' wedding on another world. Fortunately, my mother understood this addiction and cheered me on. Let me write a note, she'd say. I usually handled the note writing because to my mother, actually laying out of school to see Rachel get married yet again was a perfectly logical excuse. No, no, I'd say, we can't tell the truth. It needs to be something really dramatic, something nobody wants to really follow up on. Fetching notebook paper from the kitchen cabinet and plopping down into a recliner, I composed an entirely respectable letter to the teacher that usually included the phrase, agonizing pain emanating from her females. In the South, and perhaps elsewhere, a girl or woman refers to her inner workings as her females. I've never heard a man call his working his males, but it wouldn't bother me particularly. Over the years, my friends and I had gotten extremely clever with the writing of sick notes. I like to think it was the start of my professional writing career. Only then, I was paid in sugar daddies or black cows. Some people are born to greatness, others have it thrust upon them. So, it was with that most of the dumbasses in my class would come up to me for a great sick note. One showed me a note her mother had scribbled. No one is going to believe this. It don't even make sense, whined Opal Ann. The note was truly awful, and no, it didn't make no sense. Written in Opal Ann's mama's sad little scrawl, it read, Please accuse Opal from gym class. Her period has done swoop down on her. From that day on, I always thought of menstruation as a huge hawk that would dig its wrinkled yellow feet into your scalp for five to seven days a month and just sit there going, Call! Call! Or whatever the hell noise hawks make. Now, let's see. Uh, it's hard to believe my baby's going into middle school in a few weeks. It seems like only yesterday I was lying to kindergarten teachers about having to go out of town on business just so I could avoid having to bake shamrock-shaped cupcakes. And it really was just yesterday when the school nurse called to say that Princess had thrown up during human growth and changes class. Some students are just more sensitive than others when it comes to those videos, the perky nurse explained. And I applied a wet brawny towel to Soph's pale forehead. One little boy actually fainted. I looked at the nurse for a few seconds and realized I should choose my words carefully. I am, after all, a mature adult. What kind of perverted shit are y'all showing these kids? 
Yeah, I said it just like that. I'm pretty sure the nurse was considering recommending me for insul suspension, but she knew my lumpy ass would never fit into that tiny desk. Listen, I happen to believe schools don't need to be in the business teaching sex education to children. That's what TV is for, which is why I'm making sure the princess learns everything she needs to know from a trusted, reliable source that stresses consequences. One Tree Hill on the CW TV network. It's like human growth and changes, only it has an actual plot and the music is sick. The princess and I watched One Tree Hill together, which is my own way of educating her about nasty stuff. Sure, it's slightly unorthodox approach, but OTH covers everything she needs to know. The perils of unprotected sex, the perils of drugs, the perils of ignoring the creepy goth kid, and the perils of cheating at love and basketball. It is all there. Plus, it's filmed in my hometown, so I'm partial to its addictive charms. Well, Miss Celia Rivenbark, I can't wait to get in cahoots with you. And uh, as a side note, seriously, guys, don't go to school when you're sick. Nobody wants your swine flu. So, till next time, see you later.